Our first story tonight is being called a critical turning point in UFO studies in the Middle East. For millennia, Turkey has been a bridge between cultures, a crossroads between Europe and Asia. But as you're about to see, it might also have been the meeting point between human civilization and extraterrestrial life. It's May 13, 2009. And night owl Yolchin Yalman is stargazing in the suburbs of Istanbul, Turkey. Shortly after 3 a.m., something strange appears in the sky over the Sea of Marmara. Yolchin immediately grabs his Canon Mini DV camera, a videotape, and records this. It appears to be some sort of saucer shaped craft. It's hovering silently for half an hour about a mile away and 500 feet above the sea. But watch what happens when Yolchin zooms in. Do you see that? Now take a look at the footage when we zoomed in and cleaned it up for you to get a better look. Yalchin says that what you are seeing here is a cockpit window. And there inside the alleged craft, he's saying you can see two aliens piloting this thing. Right here and right here. Yalchin is sure he's made contact. In fact, he claims it's been happening for years. <laughs> For millennia, strange things have been reported in the skies over Turkey. In 74 BC, during a battle between Greek and Roman armies, thousands of soldiers witnessed a flaming object of molten silver shaped like a wine jar flying above them. And according to Cydonia Institute director George Haas, Yalçin's video is just one of many recent sightings. In 2016, Turkish air pilots reported that they saw a UFO go over their plane with green lights. The pilots say they saw this UFO about 17,000 feet, but the airport authorities reported that they had no evidence on their radar of any of the sightings that the pilots saw. Now, we've never seen a window on a UFO before. Yalçin's cockpit aliens appear to be a unique phenomenon and one the Turkish government has taken very seriously. The Turkish government came back and said that this is authentic and this spacecraft is nothing to do with any military programs or anything. So this could be extraterrestrial. UFOs are such a hot topic in Turkey that in 2001, a museum opened in Istanbul containing various photos, videos, reports, models, and even a library about UFOs and extraterrestrial life. But are we ready to add this video to the collection? Our experts take a deeper dive into the footage. We begin with forensic video investigator Michael Primo. We always look to the metadata first. And this block-like pixelation, this is an indication that excessive amounts of compression were applied to these pixel areas. But I don't detect any evidence of this program interacting with something that would introduce CGI. There's no indication that they were trying to deceive or mislead. So if it doesn't appear we have a doctored video, has Yalchin really been dealing with aliens? We take that question to astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio. Back in 2009, we didn't have the cameras we have today. He's zooming in on it all the way. And in my view, I don't think that you're going to be able to see anybody in a craft like that. That's like saying, if you zoom in on an airliner going by, can you see people looking out of the windows? And the answer is no, because the windows are still too small. So what does aviation expert Tim McMillan think? Turkey is a NATO member and has the second largest army in the organization. So is it possible this could be an experimental aircraft? This is a particular area where you do have military drills. And in fact, NATO holds uh, different annual drills that uh, simulating wartime environments. However, all of the telltale signs of aircraft as we know them are, are really kind of thrown out of the window. We definitely don't have any aircraft that are lenticular or saucer shaped. Beyond that, if it's going to be an aircraft, you're going to hear something, whether it's the jet engines of a plane or that rotor thunder uh, of a helicopter. And in this case, uh, the individual said he didn't hear anything while filming it. So what else could this be? McMillan has a theory. Whenever you're filming something over water, especially at a great distance, there can be some weird illusions that can make things look extremely unusual, including ships. They appear to float on the horizon in air, which is just an optical illusion. And so could we be looking at fishing vessels that are on the horizon, forming the top half of our 
dome-shaped craft and the reflection of the lights in those vessels coming in onto the water surface at the horizon suddenly makes that nice saucer shape and in fact can deceptively make it appear like it's in the sky here's the problem though those optical illusions often known as fata morgana are typically seen lower over the horizon than where yalchin was pointing his camera it's a case that's been around for a long time that doesn't mean it's true it just means it's not solved yet our verdict we're going to classify it as a genuine ufo our experts make good points and we'll agree that those images in the windows probably aren't alien space pilots but that doesn't mean we can identify what this thing actually is until we get more definitive evidence it's september 1971 and sergio loiza is flying over costa rica's lake cote photographing the terrain for the creation of a map but once he lands and begins developing the pictures, one snapshot captures something at 10,000 feet that appears to be extraterrestrial. Take a closer look. At the edge of the frame above the lake is a shiny disc-like object bearing a striking resemblance to the quintessential flying saucer. Sergio recalls discovering the startling object. Se construyó el mapa y ahí fue donde nos dimos cuenta de que había una anomalía en la fotografía. Se la llevamos al director, quien nos prácticamente nos prohibió hablar del tema. The photo was examined by researchers who deemed it authentic, but it wasn't until 2021 when attorney and UFO enthusiast Esteban Carranza got a hold of the photo that the story got really interesting. My uncle he managed to obtain a copy of the negative, and I say, aha, I gotta find a way to produce a really high quality scan. What it is. We don't know, but we know it's real. And that's where we need serious scientific and open analysis. Esteban releases the photo on Twitter and the internet explodes. According to journalist MJ Benayas, the photo may reveal this object has extraordinary capabilities. What's interesting about this photo is that the frame prior to this shot and the frame after this shot does not show this object. Some people believe that it's evidence that this object can cloak and become invisible. Some people believe that it's able to move incredibly quickly. And some people believe that it's interdimensional in that it was able to leave our dimension and go somewhere else. So there's a lot of speculation around this photograph. In previous episodes, we've shown you UFOs sighted near volcanoes. As there's a belief among ufologists that alien craft are attracted to volcanoes and other high energy sites, for the purpose of refueling. Well, this photo was taken right next to the Arenal volcano, which was Costa Rica's most active until 2010. So could there be a connection? Before we spend too long on the why, let's confirm the what. More specifically, what is this disc? Our experts weigh in. First, we take the photo to astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio. Despite all the recent hype, is this simply a 50-year-old hoax? I've seen the photo ever since I was a young kid, and so I know if it was hoax, it would have to have been done with older technology. I don't see how it actually could have been done back then, because all the attempts back then to do that had some giveaways that we could detect now. If we're not calling it a hoax, did Sergio capture a real UFO phasing in and out of our dimension? I looked at the way the light is hitting this thing, and I compared it to the light hitting the trees down here. Look at the shadow angles. They're all the same. So this is the shadow angle for the sun. Now, if we go back to the UFO, this doesn't make any sense. We wouldn't expect to see any light on this side at that angle. So the lighting is entirely wrong for this being some type of physical object that is reminiscent of, say, a UFO. Entirely wrong. So if the shadows don't match, D'Antonio believes that rules out something like a piece of equipment that maybe fell from the plane. But still, if the photo isn't faked, what does that leave us with? D'Antonio has a theory. Aerial photographs were taken. The cameras would be mounted looking down. And there might have been a glass cover over the camera to protect it. If your car gets hit by a piece of gravel from the road, you see that round fracture. Just like a chip in a car windshield, 
D'Antonio believes something may have struck the glass of the camera housing underneath the plane. But he admits his theory doesn't address one of the central mysteries in this case. A conical piece of glass that's been fractured matches this object. But I can't explain why they don't appear in the next photo frame. I would expect they would appear on many frames, but only one frame, that's a mystery. Next, we turn to astrophotographer Andrew McCarthy. The photograph in question here was captured at a focal length of about 150 millimeters, uh, focal ratio f5.6. Since we know that the object was in focus and the ground was also in focus, the minimal distance to that object from the plane had to be over 640 feet. So if it's something huge that happened to be passing under the aircraft at that time. By McCarthy's calculations, this object would be at a minimum 48 feet long. If it's further away, it could be even bigger. So we have a large craft that only appears in one photo out of three taken seconds apart, meaning it must be capable of traveling at fast speeds. Could this simply be a conventional aircraft? This was captured in 1971, long before any kind of drone existed. A helicopter or an airplane wouldn't have looked like this. So we can really easily rule out most existing aircraft at that time. For McCarthy, the lack of any conventional identifiable marks leaves him with only one conclusion. It's very rare I come across a photo that I can't easily explain away. And I think what we have here is a genuine unidentified flying object. Our verdict, genuine UFO. Our experts have put together some compelling theories, and we agree it's not a chip in the glass. But as D'Antonio noted, if there is something real there, we still haven't accounted for the fact that the light and shadows don't match. Anyway, now we see why this photo is getting all the love. September 2018, it's a warm night in Tomball, Texas, just north of Houston. Nick Daly and a group of his friends have come home from dinner to their apartment complex when they are astounded by mysterious lights in the sky. Oh my God. Take a closer look. Three teardrop-shaped glowing objects appear to hover in a deliberate, coordinated motion. Nick's friend also begins recording. One thing is for sure, Nick has never seen anything like it. They were circling around in formation and then come back to a triangle formation. It was incredible. But as the crowd stands transfixed by the mysterious lights, the UFOs suddenly disappear and then reappear. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Nick is convinced whatever he witnessed, it's not from this world. I am ex-military. I was in the United States Air Force. I've never seen flares act like that. I've never seen planes like that. It looks like UFOs to me. According to author and journalist Alexis Brooks, this is far from the first time mysterious lights have been spotted in the Lone Star State. These very strange UFO type lights have been seen as recently as April of 2022 in a town called Kyle, Texas. These lights emanated a sort of orange glow and local officials came up with no explanation. These eerie, shimmering lights are similar to the one seen in Tombal, but with one even more mysterious difference. In the case of the Tombal UFO sequence, we have something that has been referred to as phasing, that some of these craft change their atomic structure so that they appear to be dematerializing and rematerializing. So is Texas rife with UFOs? One of the first reported UFO incidents in Texas was on April 17, 1897, when a UFO crashed on a farm near Aurora, Texas, with claims of an alien pilot found dead inside. So have those aliens returned? Or is there another way to explain what Nick and his friends saw? Let's ask the experts. First, we ask video forensic expert Michael Primo to examine the footage. Does what we see appear to be authentic? We examined the file to determine if there were any original file signatures. No known file signatures were identified. And at this low of spatial resolution, it's very difficult to make determinations in reference to CGI. However, when the videos are placed side by side and synchronized, uh, whatever occurred in the sky appears to be consistent across both videos. Next, we go to aviation expert Tim McMillan. Are we simply looking at conventional aircraft, like an airplane or helicopter? We're not seeing movements that are consistent with fixed-wing aircraft. 
What we're looking at here, they're, they're really close. So they're violating how close you want to be to another aircraft. Close proximity, it becomes even more dangerous for a collision. McMillan is also skeptical these could be another common flying machine. Drone would match up best for what we've seen so far. But if they're drones, we have to start taking into account the amount of energy it takes. And so for these to be bright lights, they're not going to be able to stay up for very long because they're just going to drain that battery power. We asked astronomer and video effects editor Mark D'Antonio if the answer is in front of us all along. Could they be sky lanterns? Sky lanterns are possible, but they don't move the way these did. Sky lanterns are very subject to the wind. But what they wouldn't do is sort of circle around each other. And at certain points in the video, they're leaving like a tail almost. That is very telling information. In fact, D'Antonio believes those streaks are the final piece of the puzzle. I think that this actually was very likely skydivers with flares. But if these are nighttime skydivers, why then would they be jumping over Tombal, Texas at night? D'Antonio points to a similar event in Tombal five years earlier in 2013, which also featured slowly drifting lights. There was a high school game, and they did in fact have skydivers with flares skydive into the game. We actually saw the three in the sky, and they separated from each other, and they actually left trails behind them. And that trail could be illuminated smoke from the flare brightness. While D'Antonio makes a strong case for parachuters with flares, our research hasn't been able to confirm there was a parachute demonstration that night in Tombal. And without definitive visual proof, we think many alternate possibilities are still on the table. Our verdict? For now, we're going to go with unexplained phenomenon. But if you're in Texas, be sure to keep looking up and send us what you see. October 2021, it's a clear and cool evening in the quiet town of Meriden, Connecticut. Bruce Waterbury is out on his back deck with a pair of infrared binoculars looking for signs of extraterrestrial activity, when suddenly he sees this. A large, bright light moves in the sky across a field of stars. Take a closer look. Its shape appears to be solid and close to a near-perfect circle. There are no blinking lights, and it doesn't appear to expel any exhaust or have visible means of propulsion. It was like shimmering, just shimmering, super bright, and it was just quiet. And the adrenaline was rushing through my arms and everything, so it was a little shaky. Then, after Bruce circles a laser pointer around the orb, it appears to shrink in size and then suddenly disappears. But Bruce doesn't believe this UFO sighting was some random occurrence. I believe there's alien life. I'm not an expert, but I try to follow the steps to make contact with extraterrestrials. Writer Amy Title explains the process is part of a new trend in UFO circles called CE5. CE5 is a UFO summoning group. The people who are involved with CE5 use a special app, certain frequencies, and meditation to try to summon UFOs so they can see them. Sounds strange? Well, the idea of contacting aliens isn't as radical as you might think. In fact, a group called METI, which stands for Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, was formed in 2015 to establish a scientific protocol for contacting aliens albeit in a higher tech way than CE5 summoners. METI is a group that transmits interstellar messages via radio telescope, basically putting messages out into space in the hopes that someone will receive and hear them. In 2017, METI sent a message of scientific and mathematical equations to Lighten's star, which sits 12 light years from the Earth. Now, Lighten's star was chosen because of a planet in its solar system, GJ273b, which has been called a super-Earth. It's nearly three times as large as Earth and thought to be a good candidate for extraterrestrial life. But can UFOs be summoned from there or anywhere else? Let's see what our experts think. We begin with astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio to see if this might be some sort of aircraft. Aircraft have red lights. They have green lights, they have a bottom strobe. So we can immediately say it's not an 
airplane and it's not a drone in my view because you'd have to have a very very bright light which wouldn't make any sense and when you get ufo reports you hear the object moved through the sky at an unbelievable speed and then did a 90 degree turn to the left or right but in this particular case we don't see any of that so if it's not a ufo is it something more down to earth an animal seen among the stars almost every evening i have seen some night vision imagery of things that fly across the sky but usually they're objects like bats and Creatures like bats have a very erratic flight pattern. Instead, D'Antonio points to the smooth motion and path of the object as a defining clue. If you look in the night sky any night of the year, you can see upwards of anywhere from five to 10 satellites an hour. But if it's a satellite, why does it look like a glowing ball of light? D'Antonio thinks he has the answer. A satellite could have been high enough up in the atmosphere where the sunlight was hitting it and illuminating it, and it was reflecting the sunlight and it was dimming because it was going over the Earth's terminator into the Earth's shadow, and so it saw less and less sun until it saw none. But based on the size of the object, Rich Hoffman of the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies respectfully disagrees. It looks relatively large compared to the stars, which would tell you that it's relatively close to the observer, and so in that context, you would be saying that, well, possibly that's the Earth-light phenomena, which are basically balls of gas they're a bubble moving across the sky and they emit a light different colors they tend to be near ground and getting up to maybe about 2,000 feet altitude and moving in a straight line hoffman says one theory is that earth lights are generated by tectonic strains within the earth's crust that create an electric charge which ignites gases released within the ground it's the closest match that i can come up with but can i conclusively say that that's what it is no. So it would fall into the category of being an unidentified aerial phenomena until it's proven otherwise. Because even when you want to call it something else, you need to really have that convincing evidence that supports the fact that that's what it really would be. Our verdict, we're going with genuine UFO. Although both our experts have good arguments, as Hoffman says, until we can get more definitive proof, we feel we can't say exactly what this is. But one thing we do want to make clear, using a laser pointer in the night sky is not only dangerous to pilots and aircraft, but illegal. So if you want to do any pointing at UFOs, use your finger instead.